Hey everyone, welcome. I am here with Beth 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 Vasquez. I knew I was going to do that with your name. That's okay, Beth. <laughs> Yes, I know. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to stumble over it. And I'm so excited to be here with you just to give everyone a little heads up of how we met. Beth and I met through a mutual friend. And I really do agree that we are the company we keep because when, yeah, when Gina introduced us, I'm like, you're amazing. She's amazing. So clearly she's surrounded by amazing women. And I'm just so thrilled to sit here with you to chat. Uh, Beth is a mom of three. She says, two from birth and one bonus with her stepson, which I love. And she is the CEO and owner of Recess and Results, which is entertaining exercise for kids and a praiseworthy paycheck for you. And what I love about when we were talking a little bit earlier is that this is really about empowering moms to own their own business. So we're gonna dive a lot here into mindset, what it means to be a mompreneur and entrepreneur. And I'm so excited to get started. So tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you started this business. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here and honored to be here. And yes, um, thanking Gina for the connection because it's always great to link arms with like-minded women and just support each other along this journey of life, right? And business and all the things in between. Agreed. Um, Yes. So I grew up on a farm in Nebraska. I'll give you my short story. I grew up on a farm in Nebraska. I was number five of six kids. So I had a huge family and I was just always that girl who like had another idea. Like I was the girl selling friendship bracelets on the playground and selling sweet corn out of the back of my dad's pickup truck, which we did yeah. have to do. And I was just always, um, sort of, I guess, in sales, but also had this like entrepreneurial mindset. And maybe it came from my dad. My dad was a farmer, so an entrepreneur in his own right, you know, and also always just very involved. Um, and so, and he, he established a very strong work ethic in us from the start, growing up on a farm, you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So fast forward my life and I left Nebraska to go to college. I started in the fitness industry, which I loved. Um, and what I loved most about working in the fitness industry was that I got to help entrepreneurial minded people, personal trainers, group exercise instructors, fitness people build their own business and really understand business and how to um, you know, build a thriving one for themselves on their own terms. Mm -hmm. And that sort of spurred me into um, network marketing or the direct sales industry. And I worked on the corporate side of direct sales and again, loved just working, especially with women um, to really create this freedom, you know, that they wanted in their life. And even more than that, just show them that they are enough and give them a little bit of themselves back, you know, give them confidence and make them believe that they can really set big goals for themselves and achieve them. It doesn't have to be like a pie in the sky dream. Mm -hmm. And so from there, my passions of fitness and entrepreneurship were kind of merged with my love for Jesus and my faith. And um, hence Recess and Results were, was born. So at Recess and Results, we are really redefining work for the modern Christian mom. And we are teaching them how to turn their passions into a paycheck, resulting in the flexibility they desire, the friendships that they really want, and the freedom, you know, that God has for them in their life. Right. I love it. And that takes up a lot of boxes for us as moms. Like we want something, we want our family, we want community, and we yes. do want that paycheck, that freedom. There's a the confidence that yes. comes with that too. So I love Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Tell us like how that transition happened from this corporate job that I imagine you loved to starting something brand new. Yeah, well, uh, there was a lot of steps, I guess, along the way. And I had felt God kind of pulling at me for a while um, to, to use recess and results in a much bigger way to really kind of fulfill this mission that he had for my life. But I was kind of like, you know, I'm making a lot of good money. I really loved what I did, you know, so it wasn't that I hated my job and I really needed something else. I really loved what I did. I was paid well for it. Um, but there was this tug, you know, this like never ending sort of tug there. And then I had a baby. Mm -hmm. That changes everything, <laughs> right? <It does. laughs> 
had a baby and it changes everything. And so, you know, I left corporate America and I dove into this mission, you know, that God had for my life. And, um, it's hard, you know, it's hard. There are still days where I, I struggle like every entrepreneur does. And, um, there are days when the world will keep telling me that, this isn't going to work. What were you thinking? What are you doing? Um, and you know, we really have to just get, regain control of our mind and focus on the path ahead of us, focus on our goals and persevere. That's really the difference between success and not. Yeah. And one thing that I pick out with that, when you talk about sort of God driven, or you had this in your heart for a long time, uh, you know, I talk about that with my clients as well. Like having something that's like your internal compass or your guide yes whether it's God or higher power, or you feel it in your intuition, however someone feels that, but it's always like that compass bringing you back to center. So how did you just, what sort of your process, especially if you sort of feel like you're, you're straying or you don't feel as strong, like what works for you to kind of stay on track or to know that you're following that inner compass? Yeah, that's such a great question and a loaded question for so many people, right? I think for me, it's definitely been a journey to get to that place, um, to really not just know what your intuition is saying or know what that voice, what I call the Holy Spirit inside of you is saying, but to also surrender to it and actually listen to it and follow it. Because if you would ask most people, they know what their heart is telling them. It's just a matter of if they actually want to take the action toward it or not, you know, and, and the varying levels are stages that you go through to get to that place. And I think the first, one of the first stages is denial. I'm just going to ignore it and deny that's even happening because right. I kind of like where I am, um, you know, and then you kind of progress to the place of complete surrender and okay, you know, this is not going away. In fact, the voices are just getting louder and, you know, God is, is moving things in my life to make it so that this is what I have to do, you know? And so there's different, I guess, um, phases of that in different points in the journey. But the way I stay connected to it personally um, is a few things, but definitely prayer. One of the things that I have really tried to be intentional about is I read this statistic that 75% of teenagers, the very first thing they do in the morning is check their phone. They don't brush right. their teeth. They don't go to the bathroom. The very first thing they do is check their phone. And that's teenagers. And we're setting the example for teenagers, right? So if that's teenagers, it's probably even higher for adults. And I was guilty of it too. So I have really made an intentional effort to check in with God before I do anything else in the morning and just really set the tone and intention for the day. Um, and then to definitely pray, you know, have time in prayer. Some people meditate or, you know, whatever that means for you. So I check in with God first. I pray. I also really am intentional um, and make sure that I pay attention to the influences of my mind. And whether that is, um, you know, what shows up on my social media feeds or the books that I read, the music that I listen to, the people that I choose to surround myself with, I really am intentional about what influences my mind because um, that also influences how well you can, you know, follow the voice inside of you. Yeah, I love you so much. <laughs> Thank you. God has done a work in me. Let me just tell you that. God has done a work in me because, uh, you know, I was, a, if I'm being completely honest, I was a very prideful, um, independent woman. I don't need anyone. I can do this on my own. I make my own money. I don't need them. I certainly don't need a man. Like, you know, I can do this on my own. And mm -hmm. while there's, you know, there's a lot of confidence that comes with doing things on your own. And that's great. I think that God has humbled me in a way that I really needed, you know, to be able to just enjoy life. Yeah. What, what changed for you? What humbled you? A God. I mean, I really like, it just had this awakening that was like, independent is not what you're created to be. You know, it, God made Adam and Eve. He realized that it's not good for man to be alone. And there's so many times throughout the Bible. And even if you don't read the Bible, there are so many times in life where you could just look back and probably realize that your best times were experienced with other people around you, you know, people that you love around you, um, or having that support of people around you. And that's how life is meant to be lived, right? So yeah. live it or kind of um, staying stuck in that independent, I don't need anyone, I'm not going to ask for help because I don't need help mentality is a very lonely way to live. 
And it's an incredibly um, disastrous way to do business, right? Because we don't know everything. Well, and I think it's like a lot of what we're talking about here is very vulnerable because, you know, we talk about, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, there's a lot of power in that. Like you are putting something out there. There's this like independent power, but at right. the same time, we have to trust, like to take that leap, we have to trust that it is going to work out. And then if it doesn't, that's going to be okay. If our worst scenario, scenario happens, it's going to be okay. And then we're, we're surrendering, we're surrendering to receiving, even receiving clients or receiving a no or receiving, I mean, just this whole pathway from talking to Gina to talking to you and you've got someone else for it to podcast with. I mean, it's like, it's like just trusting, opening it up to what's going to, what's going to come. Yes. So, yeah. So there is this like idea of surrender and that like it, there is a give and take, like there is with everything in life. Like we're not... I mean, going to the gas station, there's interactions that we don't even yeah. think about. It's like second nature, but it's just surrendering. So yes. there's a balance between the two. Yes, and so true. And just being open to the possibility of what lies ahead, mm -hmm. you know, instead of so closed in that you think that you know it all. Um, and it's, it's changed my life. It's changed my business. It's changed my life. And it's just a better way to live. It's just a better way to live. Yeah. A lighter way to live for sure. It is. I know. And I also feel like it's, um, there's like a lot of curiosity and wonder that comes with it because it's just so cool when something comes your way because you're untethered from that control a little bit and you're mm -hmm. open to what's going to come. It's like, we talk about manifesting and it's just an incredible way to feel that manifesting happening. So yeah. yeah, I feel like surrender is incredible. And I love that you touched on just how we center ourselves, whether you are like a God-centered, prayer-centered person, or you use meditation. Like, there's a variety of ways we can do that. Yeah. And that you find your way. So and I gotta admit, I'm guilty too. Like I'll pick up my phone in the morning. So it's a good reminder. Yeah. <laughs> you could start with something else. Like uh, those emails can wait. You know, it can start with like, how do I want to start my day? What's my word? What's my prayer? What's yeah. my intention? And curating our feed. Absolutely. Yes. So true. And it makes such a difference. That one first act in the morning, right? It's so important. Sets the tone for the entire day. Yeah. So alongside that, what I love is that you, you are providing exercise for kids. You are providing community yes. in a paycheck, but what you're really doing is empowering women. And one thing I know we really want to touch on is mindset. So talk a little bit about like, what does mindset mean to you? I know we're kind of like introducing that just by even talking about how we start our day, but yeah. let's kind of like tease that out a little bit more. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, I've read a statistic that the most successful people have control of their thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, and it just really always struck me and as so true because especially as women, and I'm not trying to be stereotypical, it just is what it is. Women are more emotional than men, right? Yeah. So especially as women, our minds can really start to get away from us. And it goes from one thing to the next thing. It's the littlest thing that all of a sudden turns into the biggest thing, right? And um, so especially as women, I feel like just practicing the power of mindset and what I call the masterpiece mindset is super, super important because it is what is going to allow you to succeed or not and sort of get out of your own way in a sense. And I think that one of the things when I, when I talk about masterpiece mindset, again, for me, it's that the Bible tells us that we are God's masterpiece and that we have everything we need to fulfill the plans that he has for us that he created in advance for us to do. So we have to remember that when the world is throwing things at us, right? Because the world is always going to tell us we are not enough. And sadly, 90% of moms today believe they are not enough. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the, the bombarding of the world, right? We're not skinny enough. Now we're too skinny. We don't have a big enough butt, you know, we're, but don't get too fat anywhere else. Only in the butt. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> these crazy things and it's not just physical looks it's um you, you can't do everything a man can do so try to get to that point you know if you are a mom so what are you doing at work well why are you a stay-at-home mom when you should be working and contributing to the family and you don't make your own baby food what do you mean you buy store-bought baby food yeah. you know like your kids not in you know algebra in preschool why not like all of the things and you're just like whoa whoa like i'm not you know it becomes like i'm not enough i'm not i don't have enough 
And those are lies. Those are lies, you know, and especially moms, especially moms. And I have a heart for moms because I felt it when I became a mom, you know, and decided to sort of change um, my career path and really follow what God has called me to do. And I just have such a heart for that because um, people can get stuck in it, you know, and get to a really, really dark place. And I think if we could just be the light more often and especially if women can come together in this supportive community and really just speak truth into each other and lift people up and come from a place of love and understanding you know versus judgment and criticism um then how much more successful would we all be right right just like softening a little bit and and yeah, yeah. We, we live in this consumer culture and by nature consumer means consume get more be more yes. do more be Better. And I mean, I am all for like bettering ourselves or being the best version of ourselves, but that doesn't mean like killing ourselves and looking at social media, like at all this perfection that looks like it's out there, we're realizing the perfection is within, the masterpiece is within. So, exactly. Yeah. And being the best version of yourself doesn't mean that it has to be at the expense of others either. You know, yeah. you yes. can... We, I, I truly believe that we rise by lifting others and it's okay to stop and help someone else along the way, even if it means lifting them higher than you're lifting yourself at that current moment. But it doesn't have to be a competition. Yeah. Exactly. Well, how do you feel like, that, like with your business, like how do you feel like, do you feel like there is competition with your business or sort of how do you handle that feeling? Or if someone else were to come in into your same town and do what you're doing, like how does that yeah. feel? How do you handle that? You know that? what? Um, so previously I would have been threatened, not going to lie, you know, yeah. but again, I've gotten to a place in business where number one, I believe that there's enough, enough success for everyone. I really do. And are we the only kids fitness program out there? No. Are we the only, you know, thing that kids can do to stay active? No. Do I believe we're the best? Yes. <laughs> you know, I do believe we're the best. Um, but there's something for everyone. And quite honestly, um, I have learned that my target is not everyone. It's mm -hmm. not everyone. I'm not trying to get to everyone. Perfect. And it's because first of all, the number one rule in marketing is that if you target everyone, you appeal to no one. So there's yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and then again, like biblically, I believe that God has assigned specific people and places and assignments to each person and no one can take that away from you. So mm -hmm. if God has assigned that that area to you and your program is going to serve that area then more power to you how can i help you know and i just believe that i have an abundance mindset you know there's enough success for everyone there's no reason to cut people down along the way yes i agree yeah i feel like that's a really important question especially for women who are in direct sales or are yeah or in that kind of thing or maybe even want to join you just to have that feeling that just because someone else is doing something over here, I like to look at it as that's great. That means it's even more on people's radar. If that's something Absolutely. you exist, then we have options and we can find that exact right fit for us. And there's so many people in the world, there is abundance for all of us. So yes. that's a really important piece. Yes, absolutely. And I think it's about the culture that you build, you yeah. know, I, I do think it's about the culture that you build and, and at recess and results, it's one of collaboration. And I believe that all good things happened as a result of collaboration and, you yeah. know, recess and results is no different. Yeah. So in terms of this masterpiece mindset, like tell us a little bit more, like how do you get into this masterpiece mindset? How does it help guide you? Yes. So I have an entire YouTube video on this, which I'm happy to share with you. And you can link if you want yeah. it's a free masterclass. Um, but the masterpiece mindset, and I shared a few things. So making sure that you are constantly aware of the influences of your mind is one of the first things that you really need to do. And just like, because what you think about, what you listen to, what you consume is what you become, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's what controls your actions. Your thoughts control your actions. And so it's really important to make sure that you know the things that you're putting, you're fueling yourself with. Um, and so again, that's everything from what you see in your social media feed to what you watch on TV, what you, the type of music that you listen to, the podcast that you listen to, you know, the books that you read, the people that you hang around, super, super important. Um, and so just being intentional about those influences of your mind is so, so key. The other thing is my dad would always tell me, be careful who you hang around. 
be careful who your friends are because that's who you become. Right. And so I really took that to heart and not that I judge people because again, becoming a mom <laughs> really changed my view on that. I judge no one. And God too, of course. But as a mom, I'm like, listen, you got to do what you got to do, <laughs> you know, like make it work. Um, so it's not that you judge people, but you also realize that not all people are your people, you know, right. not all people are your people and it's okay to love people from a distance. Mm -hmm. And, um, so it's really, really critical, especially the top five people that you spend the most time with. Those are the people who are really going to have the greatest impact, not just on your life, but on your mindset and the way that you think about yourself and the way that you see yourself. And so it's really, really important to take inventory of that um, and then take action, you know, as needed to, to change it. Cause that's the beauty of mindset. You, you do have power over it. And then you flood yourself with truth. So for me, again, it's reading the Bible. It's having a list of 10 Bible verses that I can just go to every time that I'm feeling not enough every time that I'm feeling defeated. And for some people, it's a personal affirmation. You know, for some people, um, it's the Bible. For some people, it's a like manifesto. Um, for some people, it's even just kind of reconnecting with other successful people, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you do what you have to have that backup plan, I guess is what I'm saying for the moments of defeat, because they will come. It's that's life. And that's definitely entrepreneur life. So what is your go-to that helps to bring you back um, to the mindset? And if you need one in the masterpiece um, mindset, like free masterclass, we have an affirmation that you can use and download and kind of customize for yourself. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. And we were talking about this a little bit before. So what I want to lead into is, you know, talk about those moments of defeat and just talking a little bit more about, you know, the world kind of gives us this impression of what it's like to be a mompreneur or what we should expect yeah. from it. And yeah. tell us a little bit more about this and what do we do when we are like, wait a minute, that's not what I thought I signed up for. Yes. Well, okay. So everybody wants to be an entrepreneur today, right? We're like in the, we're in the age of entrepreneurship, which yeah. is exciting and awesome. Also, I think that we have glorified this idea of entrepreneurship and for some people almost made it like an idol to achieve, you know? And so entrepreneurship, if you would say that to someone or you say, I'm an entrepreneur, they're like, oh, okay. So you like, you know, you do whatever you want. You have a nice car. You make all this money. You show up at all the things and you like never work. Hey, like, like <laughs> an hour a week. <laughs> like money's just rolling in and maybe you have a meeting here and there but you have this awesome you know flexibility and um a never-ending bank account and that's entrepreneurship right. and while yeah maybe for like the top 10 percent of entrepreneurs you know that's the case um their story didn't start like that and their journey was not like that the whole time and i think that we have to get past this idea or this idol of entrepreneurship that we carry around and be okay with what our journey looks like because everyone's is going to be very different and that doesn't mean that you won't be successful and you won't reach that definition of entrepreneurship i pray that if that's your goal that you do um but some people realize along the journey and this is a beautiful thing that that wasn't actually their goal at the end of the day you know, and that greater things come from the journey than just having the money that can come with having a successful business. Right. Yeah. Cause that money isn't necessarily freedom. It's right. Like, it's like, what do you want? It goes back to, again, not that comparison of what it might look for someone else. And those people who got to that 10%, I can almost guarantee you, you talk to them, they worked really hard to get there. They and had a lot of sacrifice. And, yeah. and that's the thing. Everybody is willing to experience different levels of sacrifice. Right. right. And so what, what you're willing to sacrifice may not be the same thing that it took, you know, someone else to sacrifice to get to the place that they are today. So everyone has different levels of what they're willing to sacrifice and for how long. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so those are the types of things that help to kind of shape your journey. Yeah, exactly. Like, are you willing to get up at 5 a.m. to work on your business? Or are you willing to, to take time away from your spouse after dinner when the kids are asleep? Or, you know, some people have, yeah, like you're saying, different levels of what they're comfortable with. And right. 
also that trust that if you do that, you can get to this certain level if you want it. But there may be other levels that are just perfect for you right in between. Right. So, and what happens if you did all the things that you thought you needed to do and still didn't get to that level? And I think that's where some people can get really stuck um, and either give up, you know, or again, and at some, you know, either give up um, or realize that it's time to move on, you know, and it's not necessarily giving up, but it's just moving to the next season of your life, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if you have that masterpiece mindset, that conversation in your mind and, and, and that decision is made much more differently than if you have the defeated mindset. Right. That is true. Yeah. And it's also different from looking at like kind of shiny object syndrome of like, oh, this looks good. I'm going to try this. Oh, that's not what I thought it was. That's kind of hard. So I'm going to move to this. But yeah, like when you get into that center through prayer or God given or however that works and you know, like, no, this is my path, then you're probably more apt to kind of be able to work through those hard times. And so for you, like, was there a time where you felt like I'm going to give up. This isn't for me. This isn't what I signed up for. And if, if you did, how did you get through that? Yeah. I mean, you know, if I'm being completely honest, that happens probably more often than I've ever admitted to anyone, <laughs> you yeah. know, like those thoughts definitely come to my mind. Um, I wouldn't say like, not daily, but on a regular basis, you know, as you're striving towards goals or, um, you know, you want to see a certain amount of growth that maybe just didn't happen or the investor said no, you know, or, um, or, or things like that. And then again, you're like, oh man, what am I doing? You know, I left a, a steady paycheck. I left a, um, high paying job, a high level job, like where would I be now if I hadn't, if I had just kept this on the side, you know, um, all of those, things. my, you know, my savings account is dwindling. How much money have I poured into this? Am I really making a difference? You know, all of those things come to mind, but then you look back again, we can, you know, regain control of your mind. You do your affirmation or you read your verses, you regain control of your mind and you see, you look back and you see the glory in the journey and you say, wow, yes, this is worth it. You know, we have impacted this many people. We have made a difference. We are doing great things. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, I believe that again, life is about relationships and about connection and about how you can serve others well with the talents that God has given you. And I think that if you're doing that along the way, you have to give yourself grace for those times where you slip and fall or you feel like quitting because everybody does. That's our human flesh, you know? Um, and again, just, you know, pick yourself up and use the achievements that you've made so far as motivation and fuel to keep going, knowing that it can only get better, you know? You can only go up from here. So was there a time where you felt, like, I feel like when people are starting their businesses, it kind of goes from hobby mode to like, okay, wow, this is like an actual business. So did you kind of feel that transition at some point for yourself? And how did you know you kind of transitioned into business? Yeah, it's so funny. So we, I filmed a, um, I filmed a show called Elevator Pitch. It's produced by Entrepreneur. It's really, and yeah. Yes, so and it's similar to- oh, yeah. yeah, I'll link to that too for you, yeah. Amazing experience, such an amazing experience. It's similar to Shark Tank, you know, like Shark Tank-esque. Right. Um, and so I filmed, well, first of all, I received the email that said I was accepted, you know, to be on that show. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> So I, you know, I did that whole thing. I went through that entire experience and that's a whole nother story and podcast in itself. It was amazing um, in so many ways, you know, spiritually, for business, personally, professionally, everything. Um, it was a life-changing experience. One of like those moments where you look back and that's one, you know, that stands out in your life. Um, but afterwards, I also, they did a feature on recess and results in entrepreneur. And I just remember reading it and seeing it there and just thinking like, wow, like, whoa, we kind of made it, you know, like we're kind of a big deal. I remember when I was, I've always been entrepreneurial minded. And I remember reading the magazine, like literally sitting in, you know, my office at the fit, at the gym or whatever, and reading the magazine and always going to entrepreneur.com always weekly to just read articles and stay fueled up, um, and learn. And I, I thought, 
I can search recess and results on entrepreneur. Like what? That's my okay to read. Like when I'm in the airport, like I get entrepreneur magazine to yes. read. Yes. Airport read. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, wow, you know, this is a big deal. And I just remember again, like looking back, reading that magazine and thinking like, wow, the people in this magazine, I hope I can be like that someday. You know, like I hope I could be at a place where I'm respected enough or, you know, I have enough experience or knowledge or whatever to be able to contribute. And to, to just see that happen was like, okay, this is the real deal. You know, like we're not playing around. <laughs> we're really, you know, taking a stand um, and, and, and making it happen, you know, and that's what it is. That's what entrepreneurship is. It's making it happen. I did not get a deal on that show. I did it. They said no, and I was devastated. If you guys watched the video, you see it. Like, I was devastated. I also did not have control of my mind in that moment. <laughs> but um, I... I look on your face. <laughs> yes, it was bad. And, um, you know, but again, all of the things that come after it have really just actually taught me about the importance of mindset and then, you know, moving forward regardless. And yeah. such great things came from it. Right. And not seeing it, that's clearly not a failure. One, you got on a show, which is right. Mark Tank ask. Yeah. Like it's the same. And even though you didn't get the deal right then you got in entrepreneur magazine, which is incredible. Yes. Like, so you're like a leader in your field in that way. I'm sure that gave you a lot of just visibility and credibility as credibility. well. Credibility. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. what kind of unexpected things do you feel came out of it for you? Just the credibility, you know, like when you, and the clout, I guess you could say. So when you talk to someone and they're like, oh, what do you do? And you start telling them and then you're like, oh yeah. And by the way, we were featured in Entrepreneur. All of a sudden they're like, oh, what? <laughs> you know, like, okay, so tell me more. And yeah. now they have a new level of interest. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely been fantastic. Obviously just the traffic, you know, and the exposure that we received was fantastic. Um, and our business has grown obviously since then because of it. So it, that, that was really a blessing and all sort of, you know, God ordained, if you will. Um, and honestly, for me personally, as an entrepreneur, it, um, it does change my mindset. It helps me with my mindset. It makes me that much more motivated to press on because it's like, well, look how far we've come. Why would I give up now? Like exactly. what, you know? Right. Well, and what I see too is that, you know, you really are leading and helping other women to be empowered to be a business leader in their own community and in their own life. So as someone were to sign on perhaps to be an instructor through your program, like what kind of training do they get? Like what kind of mindset do you help them with? How does that look? Yeah, that's a great question. So our training is sort of like, I would, I would like to say it's very well-rounded and it's also ongoing. So we're constantly, it's not like you go through our initial training course and then you're ready to go and you're off on your own. We really are a community um, of like-minded women who are linking arms to help you know, forward this mission. Our mission is to save the world one recess at a time. And that's with moms and that's with the kids and families that we serve in the communities, right? We're, we're really um, focused on that. And part of it is helping moms to feel that they are enough. And we build confidence through entrepreneurship, but also through friendship and sisterhood and giving them that circle of influence that is life-giving and truth speaking and uplifting and empowering. And so our training consists of everything from um, kids fitness certification, which we offer and is nationally recognized. Um, so it's a really sound um, kids fitness certification so that they have the education they need to be safe, you know, in leading kids fitness classes and programs in their community. But then we also do leadership development we do consistent devotion time we are a christ-centered business so we do consistent faith building too it's not just um all business we always say we do business and we do life together so we're walking alongside each other through the storms of everything and through the the blessings of everything um so we have different types of training we just did an inclusion and diversity kind of training um we've done the masterpiece mindset training we do leadership training um Marketing, marketing and sales and just business growth is a huge one. Mm -hmm. And really learning how to talk so that people listen, you know, is, is so important in sales, but obviously really important in building a business in your community. 
Right. I love it. I love that it's ongoing too. So it's ongoing. Yes. Yeah. So we have training every month. We meet in person as well um, so that we have that time for fellowship and growth. And honestly, you know, again, community is so amazing and God is so good because he brings um, people together that really do complement one another. And so a, a lot of times the training doesn't come from me. It's coming from people that have great expertise or skill sets within our community that are there to share their gifts. And that's just such a beautiful thing. Right, exactly. And one thing I'm noticing as I'm talking to more women entrepreneurs, which is what I love about this podcast, is just this common theme of inclusion, of collaboration, and just of empowering one another. And it just, it's just, I feel like this movement that is just sort of moving our world forward and not just for us, but for our kids too. So I feel like there's just this new movement happening, which is sort of this women powered, <laughs> this yeah. is which is good for, it's good for the planet. It's good for the people. It's good for everybody. Yeah, I hope so. Prayerfully <laughs> that's happening. You know, I think like the lean in movement was kind of, was great and really started things or, you know, helped to keep momentum going in certain areas. And I think that we've taken that you know, even steps further to just not just lean in, but link arms too, you know, and to really walk alongside people and develop true, authentic relationships. And, you know, as, as social media grows and technology grows, and don't get me wrong, I love both of those things and I use them daily, <laughs> um, but people crave connection personal connection and um, social media can be a great tool to help us do that but it can also be a very isolating tool if we're not using it in that way and so i think that especially women you know being more emotional creatures really crave that that connection and when we can link arms and do things together um, in business as well as in life yeah we see amazing things happen i always say that women have a unique superpower to really change the world especially when they believe in themselves you know, yeah. that's a quote yeah. on a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, the things that they can accomplish, the things that we can accomplish on our own as super women is incredible. And so imagine that force literally linked together, you know, out in the world and committed to just making it a better place, leaving it a little bit of a better place. Exactly. So what kind of support do you have like, like through your husband or through your friendships? Like what works for you to kind of keep you fueled and to keep you going? Yeah, thank you. That's a great question. So my husband is amazing. My husband is my best friend, my biggest supporter. He is the one that pushes me to keep going. He's the one that encouraged me to take the leap. You know, he, um, he believes in me when I, when I have a hard time believing in myself. He is a steady rock and I praise God. He is my greatest gift. 100%. Um, so my husband for sure. And my kids, um, not necessarily a support maybe in the way that you think, but they keep things light for me, you know, like they're funny. They like to be active. They, they really bring joy and fun to my day. And they remind me that life doesn't have to be so serious. Um, so that's great. And then honestly, um, I do have a few like business mentors, you know, that I really stay connected with that help me along the way, but they, I don't talk with them day to day. My day to day people are my, pe my recess people. Those are my people. And yeah. they're the people that, um, you know, that God has really surrounded me with. I prayed for godly friendships in a new city. When I was in Miami, this is again, a little bit vulnerable, but I've lived in a lot of different cities and Miami was by far the hardest one for me to really get settled into. I don't know if you could tell by my last name, but my husband is Puerto Rican. I am not. <laughs> so in Miami, there's also a little bit of a language barrier. I do not speak Spanish. Um, but although people will assume that I do because of my husband and my family and my name and mm -hmm. I don't, you know, maybe I blend in, I don't know. But um, so there was a little bit of a language barrier and it was harder for me to make friends here. And so I literally prayed for godly friendships. And I remember praying even as specific as, you know, for godly friendships that would come over and we could have backyard barbecues that would be like filled with laughter and kids playing. And I remember the exact day that that happened. And I was almost like brought to tears just sitting outside, you know, with our group of friends and like, wow, like God is so good and he hears us. And looking back at my, at recess and results and the family that we've created, um, especially with our founding partners, because we're still a small and mighty 
place. You know, we're still a small and mighty family. Um, they are my family. They are my friends. They are an answer to that prayer. And I just praise God for that. Like I said, I have been humbled to the point where, yes, I'm the founder of Recess and Results, but really this is God's business and we are just all on this mission together. And so I'm thankful that I have people surrounding me um, that get it, you know, and right. that, that we're really working through everything together. Well, and I love that too, you know, even for someone who maybe they don't feel like they have that community that uh, we don't have to be a victim to that. I mean, I feel really grateful too. We moved just from one town over, but I didn't know the community when I got here. And it's just incredible, like meeting one person to another. And I just yeah. feel so grateful to have a tribe of women that support me and that I feel supported by like those yeah. My fuel, and if and if someone doesn't have that, like you didn't, you can be you can be intentional about it. You can pray about it, and you can reach out. and th That envisioning that mindset is so helpful and so important mm -hmm. because we can think we can think the negative, we can think the negative, and then that negative will keep coming, like what we yes. don't have, or we can think the positive. And even if someone you know in their relationship with their husband, if they don't get it, which can happen sometimes, like they yeah, really, you can find someone else and kind of like husband can come along for the ride yeah <laughs> anyway, just thinking about what you do want even like putting that intention towards your husband you know putting the gratitude for what we do have you know even if we may not have all of those things a hundred percent in place we look at what we do have absolutely no and and just finding the positive and and in every situation but you're right about what you said about being intentional and also visioning what you want you know that vision of a barbecue was very you know the backyard barbecue and laughter was very clear in my mind and then it, it came to fruition like I remember the moment I'm sitting in the vision that I had you know and I believe those visions are from God but for some people they manifest them or you know however however again it works in their life yeah. um, and honestly visualization was something that had been very hard for me I don't know why but it was just it was something that I didn't really get I couldn't quite get there um, and I had to pray for that too, you know, God really show me clear visions so that it would help because it is so important, um, you know, in achieving what you want in life. And then, like you said, also being intentional about the action that you take to make that happen, right? It's more than just visualizing it and then a hope and a prayer that, that it comes around. But I was intentional about getting involved at my son's school, putting myself into mom's groups, you know, really going out there and working um, mm -hmm. to find those friendships and take the actions that would lead, you know, to that vision coming to fruition. Yeah, exactly. So this is amazing. I just, I love you so much. And Aww, same, same, same. same. <laughs> and just such, such great tidbits like all along the way after this whole conversation. So okay. if you were to kind of, there's like one thing, like one takeaway, you know, as we start to wrap up a little bit, like what would that be? I mean, it's like a lot of mindset. We kind of really hit that home. So yeah, what do you, what do you got for us? Definitely. Again, I would remind people that you are enough. You know, you are enough. So don't believe the lies that will bombard you that say you aren't, you are enough. Um, and, you know, maintain that mindset for yourself because you will see a difference in your life regardless of business or, or whatever in all aspects of your life. Um, and then I would also say, I had it and I just lost it. Oh, it's okay. Um, <laughs> gosh, what was I gonna say? Oh, I would also remind you, um, especially again as women, to not be afraid to stop, not stop exactly what you're doing, but to pause, to lift someone else up. Again, even if it means lifting them higher than yourself. And um, to not, you know, that's not going to take anything away from you or your success or your journey and to know and really believe that. And the only way to know and believe that is to do it and to experience it, it happened, right? Mm -hmm. And so I really just like, if any, if you remember anything from this, it's that there is enough success for everyone. And as women, we really are better together. So pause, turn around, you know, lift someone up and then keep going and then keep going and recognize that it did nothing to jeopardize your journey or your success. That is so perfect. Thank you so much for downloading that for us. Yeah. So if someone wanted to get involved or learn more about getting involved with your company, how yeah. what would they do? Like, what do you have for listeners? 
Yes. So definitely I'll send you the link to the, the Masterpiece Mindset Masterclass that's on YouTube. You can watch that at your own, you know, leisure. And I hope that it's a blessing for you. Um, and there's more information there also, but you can also go to our website. It's recessandresults.com and you can learn lots more there. Um, specifically to join our team, you would just click on become an owner and there's specific information there. Yeah, I love that too. Become an owner. Become an owner, yes, because you are. You are an owner. You're a mompreneur. You are a boss. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to have like a daily download from Beth into my phone every day. I'm like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> <I got that. laughs> what a nice compliment. Well, I'm so glad that we connected. It was so great to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we'll get those downloads in there for the listeners to find you on your YouTube and if they want to join to, to link up to your website. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Beth. Bye.